Good morning guys! Today we are hopefully finishing this drawing off. It's It's got to be done. We got to finish this. This is the January piece. We want to start moving on to the February piece. So um, I'm going to be drawing the little girl today and um, I'll do that live for you guys and then once we finish drawing the little girl we will um, head on over to Facebook and do a live stream over there with all the finishing touches and um, it'll be fun to hang out with everybody. Um, okay, so I noticed something yesterday and I will probably do it a little bit later today but I forgot to do the monthly giveaway yesterday so um, during the student challenge I was supposed to do a giveaway for those that participated and I completely forgot so we'll do that a little bit later today and um, oh, excuse me and then at least yeah at least that gets that out of the way so the giveaway for the month is just going to be a $50 voucher for art supplies um, it will the voucher will depend on where you're located if you're in Australia it will be an Eckersley's voucher if you're in the US it'll probably be a um, Jerry's Autorama voucher and if you're in Canada or wherever we'll sort it out and um, I'll give you the the most um, relevant art voucher to you guys <laughs> so that'll be the giveaway for the January um, the January giveaway so I would have liked to have given the ebook away as well but I have not finished the ebook for this month yet so I um, still need to do that and finish it off so hopefully tomorrow is the day that I get to to spend on it maybe or today I'm gonna have to do it today but um I have also put up the calendar for February so I got Vinny's whole month's shift so I could work my um, hours into the same hours as he's working hours so you'll see that there are some Saturdays and some Sundays that I'll be working and then I'd have a day or two off during the week and it's sort of just spread around that way to match his hours of working and um, yes yeah, so we're still doing everything that we usually do the dates are just um, moved around slightly uh, according to that and we have um, the color pencil magazine um, February challenge we've got the smart art box for the month we've got I got I'm getting some giveaways from pan pastel so we're gonna do a portrait demo with the pan pastels portrait kit um, we've got the drawings or the images that you guys voted for so those are tutorials that are specific to those in the student portal um, we've got the leaf underwater. We've got the women with all the nice silky lavender material underwater. We've got the surreal piece with all the Siamese fighting fish forming a, a meditating monk. And we have the tips and tricks video on how to size your, your images for bigger drawings. Um, Yep, so there's, there's a lot that's going on and a lot that's going to be happening for February. And um, I'm really excited about it. So this month was super, super busy. We got a lot done. And if I can get this done, then I will be on track. If, this, if I can get this done and I can get the ebook done, then we are sorted. <laughs> then um, I've accomplished everything that needs to be accomplished for the month of January. So, um, okie dokie, so this one is going to be, uh, we're going to start off with a little girl. So I am working sideways, I've just turned the, uh, I've flipped the screen so that it looks like it's um, vertical to you guys, but I'm not, I'm working from this side here. So it might look strange with my hand over there, but I'll probably come in a little bit this way or whatever, whatever is required at the time. And um, then yeah, we can get get her done. So I will keep an eye on the Facebook page and that if anybody's having trouble. But I think we should be good. We should be good. <laughs> so for those who tuned in yesterday for the student challenge, I have to apologize for how unorganized I was. And I was really tired, so it was slightly moody, which I think was sort of reflected into the video but that is all in the past that is yesterday today I am 
very happy, very motivated, very excited to get this drawing done. And um, I hope it shows. So I hope you guys enjoy this with me. And if you have any questions, please ask. Ask away. This is your time. Because um, there's only six of you on here now. So that means you guys have all my attention. So you, if you have any questions, ask away. If you um, go and look in the student portal for what's coming up in February. If you have any questions about what's coming up in February. You can ask them now as well if you want. I have incorporated all the different materials that you guys want to see me use. So we've got a tutorial that we'll be um, using the pastel matte paper. We are doing with the um, peacock that we're doing in three parts. I'm going to try and cover the whole peacock in three parts. In part one, before we even start the peacock, we're going to be experimenting with different black surfaces. So different papers, different ways to apply the black and see which one is going to be the most black to use as negative space and um, to put our pencils over the top. So that's going to be a fun experiment because that's something that we all want to know how to do. Get proper black background when we are using nice bright contrasting colors over the top of the background. Um, what other supplies are we using? Oh, my fantasy art piece that I'm doing next, I am going to be using my airbrush for the background. So you guys can see how I use the airbrush to build up my foundation. Um, so my underpainting and the background and that we're going to use the airbrush. I set everything up so I think it's actually going to work in this room. I just have to open the window completely and we should be good to go. And plus I'll be working with a really small needle so I won't have airbrush ink sort of spraying all over the room. Um, so that's going to be good. So it's trying a lot of new things that we haven't done yet that I've been uh, that you guys have been requesting. So I do take all of that into consideration. So if you need to want to see something, we'll do it. Also, I do want to throw in a video one day if I feel like I can find a free day. And we're going to play a bit around with the acrylic pores because I've been having so much fun with that. And I found a much neater, tidier way of doing it without and without wasting a lot of paint. So all those acrylic pores that you see that I did on Instagram, I use tiny little 30 mil bottles of paint and I still have heaps of paint left. So I'll show you guys how to really get the most out of a small bit of your paints. And we work on little mini canvases and um, we're going to have a play around with that hopefully sometime this month as well. Because uh, Kitsland's art, um, we're going to be doing collaboration in March. And he wants me to show him how to do some of that. He said that looks really fun. That'll be a cool um, video. So um, we're both going to have a play with that. Not that I'm an expert to teach him, but I'll just um, show him what I've done and we can do it together. And it'll be fun to see what a mess he makes. <laughs> so um, yeah, so feel free to ask anything that you guys want. Hey, Diane. Hey, Maureen. Hey, Barbara. So nice to see you guys on here. And um Yes, so let's get started. Um, colors, colors. So we want to work on her skin. She's got warm tones in her skin, but I'm thinking I'll go pinkish, pink and warm tones. And. So, okay, let's, let's see how we go with these colors. So we've got a, um, A granite rose. Oh my gosh, this is confusing. A granite rose, apricot, yellow, and brownish orange. So we'll try these colors on her skin. I know these three colors look completely different, but they, they work very well together. It's just a matter of how you layer and gradate those colors, and we're going to be using our solvent and our small brush to really utilize um, the fine little details. Okay. So I'm guessing you guys are not having any issues with the audio and that you guys can hear me fine, see me fine, and it's all good. We can get started. 
Um, I'm thinking maybe I should do the eye and the lips first before we get to the skin. So I want the eye to be blue. And I need to get some colors on here. Let's go put the color palette over here. Oh. So for the eye, I think I'm going to start off with like a pinkish tone, a, a, quite a dark one. Let's go with We'll start off with the brownish orange 043. Now I want this pencil to be really sharp. Because we are working quite small in this section. Oh good, oh good. I don't have a very, very detailed reference of her eye because um, I sort of, you know, manipulated it around in terms of sizing and stuff, but I think I've drawn enough of them to sort of get the idea. You know, just under the eyelid it is going to be quite dark and then we still want to form that shadow in the eyelid she's looking back just got quite a big tear duct This might be a good color as well to use um, for like the shadows in the skin tone. So by the lips, just under the nose. best part about this paper is if you go too dark it's not going to matter because we can still lighten it up So this is in her neck here and there's a shadow there. I think it's quite dark right next to the hairline over there. I 
goes over her face here, so this is also going to be in shadow. She's got a very, very light eyebrow. So I did <laughs> want to start off with the eye, but this color is a good color to use in the skin, so I'm just going to use it. So when we do the details of the fairy ad, we'll start sort of going over her um, face and for more shadow over here. Good morning, Tracy. So her eye is like a grey blue, but I'm tempted to just make it a very strong contrasting blue. So I'm going to use cobalt blue number 160. And we can use extravagant colours because I mean this is a fantasy art piece. Cobalt blue 160. That's it. <laughs> and then black. So we use the ivory black four ninety six. And use that within the eye. To bring some highlights into the eye, I'm going to use some of the Bluish Pale 371.
I'm going to use some silver gray 002 for the white in the eye. going to do the entire white of the eye with this color because it's not none of it's actually white it's better then I'm going to use a teeny teeny tiny little brush using a number 2-1 or 2-0 sorry, where did the 1 go? 2-0, dip it in my solvent it's a nice small brush I'm gonna blend that in So when you have such a tiny brush, you could move things along a little further and so we can use the small brush to create that eyelid. So just push what you've got on the brush and the solvent a little bit further. Oh my gosh, it looks scary. She looks frightened. Let's bring that down a little. Okay. The white pencil. So white zero zero one. Hey Ben. <laughs> white zero zero one. Sharpen that. Okay. So now we can lighten some of the areas up in the eye. I'm going to take my Uni Posca white paint marker and I want to put that highlight in the eye. I think I'll also add a little bit of a highlight here.
So, because I don't actually have a proper reference to look at, I, I have to guess some of this. So, I'm just <laughs> scratching some, just off the surface of the paper. The paint. Oops. Well, that looks better. So she's got very, very delicate lashes, which I'm not going to touch yet. Um, so let's use a bit of the granite rose for So this is going to add a nice soft pink to the tear duct of the eye, which we're going to follow through a little bit further into the eye, and just underneath it. And I think I'll bring some up into here as well. darker purple or yeah. I think we'll use burnt sienna no 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 Let's use brown. Brown 049. Just for those darker areas, sort of where you see the shadow between the eyeball and the soft skin surrounding it. So it just gives it a little more of a three-dimensional look. And then probably just under the eye and a little bit further away will create the illusion of a bottom eye lid. Something like eyelash we'll do later. Okay, that's that's good. That's good enough. It's scary doing such a small eye and you especially if you like really want it to look good and realistic. Okay, her skin. Let's do more on her skin. So, I'm thinking maybe as a foundation color. It's gonna look scary at first, but it's a start. So we're gonna use Apricot 041. Yep. And I'm going to 
block this in as a foundation color. Now, I only do this if you're using sanded paper. I wouldn't do this if you are using um, watercolor paper because with watercolor paper you want to gradually go dark. I'm going fairly dark, pretty straight up. Okay, then I want to use some of the granite rose that we used a little earlier and I'm going to go over everything that I just put down and next to it as well. So that looks very weird right now, but that's fine. Then I'm going to use a bit of the brownish orange we used um, first and really look for the shadowed areas. Okay, let's blend that in so we can get a proper look at that. So taking a clean brush and dipping it into my solvent and very, very little solvent on your brush. Very, very little. And you gradually start blending that in.
Hey, Marie. Marie says, just caught up with the student challenge stream. So many great drawings. He has lots of good drawings. Lots of good drawings. It was great. So, um, yeah, Maureen just said that for anyone who entered the student challenge, uh, yeah, I'll be drawing a name for a $50 art supply voucher um, soonish. So, <laughs> I completely forgot to do the giveaway. So, with the student challenge, I was supposed to do a monthly giveaway along with it um, for those who entered. And I, I completely forgot about it. So, <laughs> we'll do that today. So this might be a scary part for you guys and like oh no blending skin tones and that it's like you don't want to mess it up but it's the same as anything else it's gonna look bad before it starts looking good you gotta work on the building up those tones and you know just practice practice it's not gonna happen straight away and don't be afraid to let it look bad first before it starts looking good that is what it has to do. Beauty about this paper is if you feel like it's too blotchy or something or if you want to add a bit of highlight you can put a bit of extra solvent on your brush and then you can help lift it up or you can um, blend it a bit further but if you really want to bring out a highlight then put excess um, solvent on your brush and then you'd be able to lift it off I'll show you what I mean in a minute let me just blend the rest so I'd like to make the cheek look a lot more highlighted so I'll show you how I do that but this is only the base layer, so it's still going to get um, get better. Oh, that's wonderful. Marie says, thank you for the critique. Uh, would make it darker, but someone wanted to buy it. <laughs> that's fantastic. We did a more recent flower in pink and definitely tutorial helped me develop values. That's fantastic. I'm so happy to hear that. <laughs>
that looks super dark. So I want to bring some highlights out. Um, so I've got solvent on my brush. I'd like to highlight a little bit more on her nose. So I'm using the solvent on my brush to lift it off. I feel like that needs to curve more. Like that. Okay, so now I'd like to add a very light, if I have one. Okay, so let's use the cream for 91. This is going to help us make this look smoother and less blotchy. And we're going to bring those highlights out. So cream for 91. So paying attention to my reference, there's a lot more light on the head here. I'm not recording. Okay, now I'm going to blend that in.
Look at that, that's smoothing it out quite nicely. So I have noticed that about this paper, the first layer will easily look quite blotchy, but after that, after that initial first layer, it all just becomes really nice and smooth every time. Marie says, I found the discussion on the stream yesterday regarding own style very interesting. I've always had a very strong style, but have decided to cross over into realism. Hope two can mix and gel. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Style is not something you can teach somebody. That's just something that you develop on your own. And a lot of times artists really struggle to find that. So if you found one, then use it. Because that's it's a, a strong identifier of your work. So if people notice a sense of style, um, then they can look at an image and immediately know that it was you. That's, that's what style does. It immediately identifies the viewer with the artist um, because the style is so unique or intriguing. Whereas realism is a skill, not so much a style. But if you can find that there's, there's sort of a way for you to present your work and people can easily identify it as being different to other realism skills in it if, if you're comparing then um then it's great you should use it and keep it Yeah, you can learn a lot from, you know, realism tutorials, but doesn't mean that you necessarily have to aim for realism. <laughs> like this piece here, I am aiming for realism, but I don't have to go that far. Like her face is really looking like a little painting right now and I could I could just stop. I, I can leave it looking like a little oil painting in a sense. So you sort of, you, you play around with what you're doing as you're doing it and then you decide if you like the look or not. And if you end up, it looks more illustrative in the end, then that's fine. You're still following a realism tutorial, but you're finding something different from it. If that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, if, if you like colorful, then go ahead and exaggerate the colors. There's a lot of things you could do. You could aim for realism, but be very exaggerated with unrealistic colors. Um, you could do the opposite, try and get very realistic colors, but your aim is not for realism. It's sort of, I think it's just something you, you get and you don't even know. Yeah, exactly right. Anything will develop more and more the more you put practice into it. Okay. Right. Let's 
put those delicate little nostrils in. I'm going to use brown. I want to add some yellow because I really want a bit more of a warmer tone in there. So I'm going to use the pale yellow 011.
and like that. And then, do I want some of this color? Yes. And then I'm going to use some Apricot 041. Help add some of those warmer tones. Thank you. I'm also really liking this skin tone. Blending that in. She does Maureen. <laughs> it's a little. Yeah, she's also got a strand of hair that's like over her face, which I'll add later. I think I'm going to use a really tiny brush.
for these dark areas here. So her nose it goes down there. The nose is always a scary part for me. <laughs> I'm always afraid to do the nose. Something that's weird. Okay, you can see it.
it be <laughs> before I ruin it. I think once I add the fur next to the face, I will make it, it'll look fine. Okay, now I'm going to give her some rosy cheeks and some nice pink lips. So I think for cheeks I'm going to use the raspberry red. very very lightly um. I'll use this in the lips as well even use a little bit in the eye here. Okay. Blend that in. Gonna add a little bit of white over the top of that. Make it look a bit more rosy. Cool, subtle, subtle but right. Subtle or just just right. And then I think I'd like to add some of the granite rose on the lips. Which is where they'd be the highlights. And then use that teeny little brush to blend that in. a little bit of the white And a bit of the granite rose. Oops. And then I'm tempted to add a little bit of a highlight on the lip there.
also want to add some granite white uh, some of the white paint marker in the eye here love it and then some of the granite rose sharpen it And then a little bit of that brownish orange to bring that bottom eyelid back in. Beautiful. Now I do want to add some teeny tiny little eyelashes, but I'm a bit terrified of doing that. but very terrified. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna use Bister number 047. Very, very sharp. to add very very tiny little areas of lashes just like that that's it tiny 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 little detail oh that looks beautiful she looks so pretty Gorgeous. And add a bit more to the shadow under her chin. And just with a real small little brush, define her chin a bit more. Marie's asking, did I get to varnishing the jellyfish in the end? No, I haven't done that yet. That's going to be like a whole day thing. I need to set up the shed and then I need to take all my recording equipment and that to the shed. I'll make like a spray booth. I have to do it outside. I can't do it inside. So it's going to be like a, a big thing. So I, I'm... I will wait until I'm done with this, I think. Um, and then I'm just going to do everything at the same time. And then I'll do a video on it. 
So I don't know when that's going to be. <laughs> Thanks, Maureen. Yes, I love her eye. Her eye turned out really, really nice. Very, very bright and pretty. Okay. Um... Let's move on to her hair. Yes. Okay. So I will use the brownish orange. Okay. I'm getting comfortable here. You guys don't have to see me. <laughs> okay. Right here. So using the brownish orange number zero forty three, I'm going to start finding those shapes in her hair so find out the direction of the hair where those darker shadows are going to be
So next week's going to be a really useful video for those of you that are here um, on the $15 subscription. Um, I'm going to do a live stream on how to edit the fantasy art reference that we're doing next week. So we've got a whole bunch of Siamese fighting fish reference photos. We've got um, a sort of monk to use as a, a template almost for shaping the fish. And um, I'm just going to show you guys how, how to put it together. So we're going to literally start from scratch. So as you open Clip Studio, what it looks like, how to import the images, how to put them together, how to remove a background, um, how to balance any colors, all that sort of stuff we're going to do live um, on there. And then what you can do is because Clip Studio offers a one month free trial, you guys can, um, once the video is finished, or with me if you want, you guys can give it a go as well. I will make sure to maybe create a little folder for you guys with all those reference photos so that it will be easy for you to just use them um, or import them when you need to while creating the reference in Clip Studio. And I think that would be cool for you guys because maybe you guys can use those images and create your own reference. And then when I color it in, you guys can just color it in in the same way, but you've still made it unique to you because you created your own reference in Clip Studio using those methods. Or even something completely different. But once you at least know how to use it and do that with your references, um, that's it. You know it. You can do it for any of your your drawings that you're preparing. Okay, so we've got the basic shape of her hair now. So, you know, we don't worry about details. We only do that very last where we might add sort of like little strands and stuff. But that doesn't happen a lot. So now I'm going to actually get, find the darkest area. So I'm going to use the Bister number 047. And I'm paying attention to my reference and looking at where the darkest shadows of the hair are. Because she's blonde, so there's not going to be overkill on this. These dark shadows. But it does make give the hair a three-dimensional um, form. It makes it look thick and curly and flowy. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Oh good, I'm so glad to hear all this information. So I'm glad to see that this thing can be very, very useful for you guys. So Marie's saying, I genuinely don't have a clue about it, so it's going to be invaluable. Diane is saying, I'm the same Marie, and it's something I'm really interested in doing too. Marine says, I have a lot of computer skills, but photo editing is not one of them. So good, good. I'm glad this you'll find some use out of it.
hair is actually so easy to draw but a lot of people just struggle with it but if you just break it down into shapes like this um, do the underpainting where you just block in the color and then do the detailing um, it's just a matter of values again like you as long as you get your dark values right and you get your highlights right then that's that's it you can get hair to look like hair And you, the key is also to not make every strand go in the same direction because then it just looks too symmetrical and fake. So the um, value does help to add the realism to it. And the various directions of hair. <laughs> you guys are in sync. Get a nice brownish color. I think I like this one. Hazel, number zero fifty three. start bringing in those colors And then let's use some of the pale yellow. Put 
pretty much all the bits that we haven't done yet. You're going to add the, that yellow. Then we can start blending it in. Take a two minute break, I'll be right back. I'm going to take a photo and put on Facebook what her face looks like close up. And then you guys should be able to get a good idea. Maybe if I bring it close, closer to the camera like this. You see how pretty her eye is? He says, so glad I have something to do on a Saturday night. A treat for me. <laughs> I'm glad. Maureen says the same. I'm not much of a TV watcher. I know. Who watches TV anymore? Well, I watch Netflix. Diane says, for me, it's a treat on a Sunday morning. Yes, so it is now. 20 to 12 a.m. over here. Treats all around. Oh, Diane, I gotta agree with you. I also love good murder mysteries. I love, oh, there's one on Netflix called Franny Fisher's Murder Mysteries. I love that. And um, Poirot and uh, Agatha Christie's Murder Mysteries. Marple. I love those. I love those sort of things. It's intriguing. Okay, okay, so what are we doing? So now we're going to blend the hair in. So I think I'm actually going to start with the darker areas first. And you can, when you're using textured paper like this, you can totally use your brush to create the strands of hair if you wanted to. So go in the direction of the shape that you're working in. Oh, 
Sherlock, I love Sherlock. I've watched all of them. They are amazing. Yeah, that is weird that you haven't watched it. <laughs> I've watched all the Game of Thrones. I do love Game of Thrones. Um, and Walking Dead, I've watched most of it and then I sort of got over it. I, I think I just haven't watched the last season. Marie's asking, do I like the actor? I'm guessing with Sherlock Holmes, yes, I do. I do like him very, very much. At first, I wasn't sure if I would. Um, but then I, I, now I just can't see him as a different character or a different actor. He's amazing. I'm assuming to, I, I'm not sure what his name is. He was also Doctor Strange. But yeah, he's, he's a good actor. Okay, now I must try not to put my hand down on her face because if I smudge her face, I'm going to be very, very disappointed in myself. So we need to protect her face. Benedict Cumberbatch. Is that his name? <laughs> um, Doctor Who. You know what? The Aussies rave about Doctor Who, but I haven't really watched any of it. And it's very old. Very old, long, ongoing series. Maybe I should give it a go. I also love science fiction stuff. I love Star Trek and Star Wars, um, Stargate, all of them. I like them all. Doctor Who is big in the States. It's pretty big here in Australia too. <laughs> Do you see 
see how little we did with the hair and look how much it already looks like hair. <laughs> I don't think there's anyone in this world that does not love Harry Potter. Who wouldn't want to be captured by a world of magic and fantasy? Wow. Yep, you are definitely a fan, a serious fan. <laughs> I'm using this tissue which is supposed to protect the face to clean my brush.
how do you guys feel about me switching over to live stream this a little bit to everybody? Because um, I think all the, the most important parts of this are done. It's just a matter of um, finishing her body and then tweaking all the details. And then I'll, I'll go live for a little bit. And then once the live is over, it won't be available to the public anymore. Is that okay with you guys? Just because it's gonna start getting late and then people won't be able to participate. Marie, thank you for joining us. Hey, Gareth. Okay, cool. Give me a sec. Hey Bob, actually before I switch over, I need to do the giveaway for those that participated in the challenge, before I forget. So there were 10 of you, I'll give you guys a number now. You didn't do the challenge, Gareth, so you're not going to win anything, unfortunately. It's only for those that participated in the January challenge. And it's a $50 art gift voucher. Taste something real quick. Cool. Oh, good. I just subscribed to myself. <laughs> Okie dokie. So, those that entered.
So Barb is number one. Uh, Jamie is number two. Christy is number three. Luella is number four. Marjean, five. Mary, six. Mike, seven. Peggy, eight. Steph, nine. And Tracy, ten. I don't think I missed anyone. I really hope that I didn't. Okay, so we've got ten. Um, let's randomize that. So this is for the January giveaway that I forgot to do yesterday. Number six. Who's number six? One, two, three, four. Mary. Mary. Mary Primrose. Well done. I will send you the $50 voucher. I s that's what I think, Maureen. Like, I'm thinking that now. That's why I've been so quiet. And Marie, did Marie just leave to go to sleep? Is Mary and Marie the same person? You guys confuse the hell out of me with all these different names that you have on different platforms. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I'll sort it out of there. <laughs> so Marie, you are Mary. Marie, Mary. Same thing. Same person. You just have a different Facebook name to your YouTube name. <laughs> okay. Congratulations! I'll send you a $50 voucher. Um, I'll chat to you about it afterwards. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Just confuse me. Confuse me. Cool. I got it now. I got it now. Cool. Well done. You did very well with your rose entry. Okay, let's go live. <laughs> Um, just give me a sec. I'll be right back. I can just switch over to public um, during the stream. I was gonna go Facebook Live, but ugh, we live now. Just switch over; it might be easier. Uh, okay. Good night, Marie. <laughs> Enjoy your pencils. <laughs> yeah, Gareth. She she mods for quite a few people. Um, okay, make this public and off we go.
refreshify everything. Sure we'll see people popping in from now more and more when you say hello but I'm gonna keep blending the hair for the time being let everyone know that they can come join us so just on the the art hordes page So I am very determined to get this drawing done today. Even if I'm going to be sitting here till midnight tonight, it's got to get done. I think um, one thing that I really love about this image though, or this drawing, is that because there's so much going on, I haven't found myself getting bored of it yet, which is good. So if this whole thing, this entire piece was just the cat, for instance, then I think I would have really gotten bored of it. But because we keep moving on to all these different areas and there's different things going on everywhere, um, it's like a complete new drawing when you move to another section of the drawing. So it's really fun. Nothing gets boring. And it is a big piece. I mean, it's A2. It's pretty big. Um, so I'm excited to see, just step back and look at the entire thing finished. So all we've done, I've only done the un underpainting of the fur here. I still have to do all the detailing in the fur. Um, I still have detailing to do in the face, in the horns, um, in the sky with the stars. I, I've got detailing to do pretty much everywhere. But it's not the detailing part that takes so long. It's the... Um, it's actually the the blending of the foundation colors, the underpainting that takes the longest and creating the values and stuff. And the details are fairly quick, especially on this paper, they're really quick. So, but this is the seventh part, so I think we're up to about 30 hours, roughly about there, almost there, in the time that we've spent on this, because we, we spend about, three four 
five hours on one part when we do the stream so it's times six or seven so we we're definitely in the 20 20 something hours <laughs> hey rob nice to see you on here <laughs> So we started the girl this morning and then um, my students were with me while we were doing that. And now we are just pretty much going to finish her off and then do some touch-ups on the background. And then that's all I will be streaming for this drawing. And then all the little touch-ups and tweaks um, I'll probably just do in my own time um, after this and get it done. And then... I have so many video clips of this to um, merge together into a nice time lapse. So I don't know what it's going to look like. Oh, that reminds me, I need to record. So I have no idea what the time lapse is going to look like because the Canon it sees everything. Um, landscape view which means it's sideways it's not straight up because this is actually a portrait drawing not a landscape drawing portrait view portrait orientation you guys know what i mean um so creating time lapse video may be a little bit tricky but anyways i'm just thinking out loud that's actually <laughs> no one's problem that's my problem but yeah i'm just thinking thinking out loud So all we've done with the hair is actually just put, <laughs> I think we used three colors. We just used three colors. We did the dark shadows, the medium tone and the light tone. And now we're just blending it with solvents. So this, this little bit that you see over here is all the color that we applied. And then the minute we apply solvents, then this is what it turns into. And we've done no detailing in the hair at all. So this is a really quick and great way to do hair. Hair doesn't have to be difficult. It's just a matter of placing your values in the right place and your highlights and making sure to focus on the shapes of the hair. And then the rest is easy. So you just do your underpainting by blending your colors, especially on this paper because you don't have to do a lot of layers. You only have to do like two. <laughs> and then you add your layers, your details over the top if you want to add like little fine strands or something um, or extra highlights and details to just make the hair look like there's more softer strands but that's not the hard part at all so if you focus on hair as shapes then you you're not going to have any issues uh, you don't want to focus you don't want to be drawing every strand and then when you do that you draw you find that you automatically tend to work in one direction and then if all the strands are going in the same direction it just doesn't seem quite realistic it seems very symmetrical um, so it's good to just focus on on shapes and shadows and then once you've got that down then you think about any further details and you'll notice that it will just be automatic <laughs> Robert's saying that he thinks I might need a holiday soon why is that? Holiday season's over. And you know what? I just, I pretty much had a holiday. Because um, we had an internet outage for three days. And I took full advantage of those three days. I didn't do any, well, I did art. I did try some of the acrylic pour. But I didn't do any, 
like tutorials or any of, of these things so I did have a nice break I had a lot of time to myself I had a lot of time with Vinny I had a lot of time reading so I did have a nice little little break and I feel all rejuvenated and ready to get stuck into all the hours of drawing again <laughs> Hey Marie, all good, I got your message. I'll get in touch with you after the stream uh, or when you wake up. <laughs> oh, cool, thank you. That saves me some time. <laughs> So later today, I do plan on sending out a newsletter that covers everything that we did in January and everything that's coming up for February. So if anybody wants to know what the schedule is going to be like and what we're going to be learning, um, we're going to be trying a fair a few different tools. So I'm going to finally try the pastel matte paper and the UART 400 paper. And um, I the new fantasy art piece that I'm doing for February, I'm going to be incorporating my airbrush um what else are we trying um we're obviously doing the february challenge for the color pencil magazine which is a box of chocolates um, um and then the smart art box video for february and what else Ooh, and pan pastels is sending me a um portrait kit so I'll be doing a portrait drawing using the Pan Pastels portrait kit and then giving that away. Um, what else? For, for those that are subscribed as students, we will be doing two water scenes. So we're going to do one with the leaf and some rocks underwater. It's like a stream. And we will also do one where a woman is totally submerged underwater and she's got this beautiful lavender silky material all around her um, with a reflection sort of just on the top of the water so I think that's that's going to be a really interesting one and we're going to be drawing peacock feathers and before we do the peacock feathers we are going to be experimenting with different black surfaces so we're going to try acrylic paint on black paper and then apply pencils over the top to see how black we can get the background we're going to try just regular black drawing paper we're going to try the sanded black drawing paper we're going to try ink as on white paper to create you know black ink and then see how it would work with the drawing over the top of ink so we're going to play around with all these black sur drawing surfaces of paper so that we can figure out which surface is going to be the most black surface to use because a lot of people, you know, on occasion you want to do a drawing that just has negative space. So you want to do a drawing on a black background, but you can't get the background black enough. Well, I find that I struggled with that. So um, we are going to be playing around with that before we actually apply the peacock feathers. Because um, we've got these very bright green peacock feathers, and then we've got some black negative space. So I want that black negative space to be very, very black. And I really struggled with the jellyfish to achieve that. So we're going to experiment with different methods so we can find the one before we apply those nice, bright, luminous green peacock feathers over the top. 
So, oh, and the tips and tricks video that we're doing for students this month is how to size your reference. So if you only have a printer that prints A4 sheets of paper, but you want to draw something that's three times the size, you don't have a projector, you don't want to trace against the computer screen, I'm going to show you how you can accurately divide and grid your prints and separate them into smaller printable areas so that you can transfer it onto a bigger sheet of paper. We'll also go through the other methods of using a projector um, and a, a um, light box and all that sort of stuff and go through all of those methods so that we can find what's going to work the best for us when we're using an image that's this small and trying to draw it this big kind of thing. So, so much that is happening in February. It's going to be a crazy, crazy busy month, but I think it's going to be a very, very good one. So, I'm excited. But yes, if you want to know all those details, then go to my website and just sign up to the monthly newsletter and I'll be sending that out sometime today. So I'm really excited actually about the pan pastel portrait one because I adore pan pastels and um, pan pastels has agreed to send me a couple of kits over the next couple of months. So I'm going to be doing proper workshop tutorials of them live to everybody on my YouTube channel um, so that you guys can see exactly how to use the pan pastels, especially in portrait, well, in skin tones. Well, the first one's going to be skin tones. Um, and I've already designed this beautiful reference of a woman with amazing skin and big eyes. And then I sort of just changed the colors around of the background. And I put this beautiful bird in front of her just to create that extra burst of color and intrigue to the image. So um, I'm really excited to be drawing that. I think it's going to be really fun. And then um, I'm thinking I'm going to be using pastel matte paper for it. But I, f I first want to... Um, try using pastel matte with colored pencils which I will be doing before that anyways on some one of the other tutorials so I'll be able to know if I want to be using the pan pastels and then any extra fine details I can use with my colored pencils on the pastel matte paper so exciting exciting stuff Bob says, I want the wildlife pan pastel kit so bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, is that the one that Jason Morgan designed? That'll be a good one. So. Yeah. I think um, I'll be doing a pan pastel giveaway every month. And we'll give it a go. It's going to be fun. I feel very privileged with these opportunities that are coming my way, so I'm going to use them as best I can. That's going to benefit all of you. <laughs> hey Mike Oh camera check, thanks Rob Yep, it just did its little clicky thing Oh 
Oh, no, it's Betchy died. So, yeah, we've been streaming for... Since 10? Two and a half hours? Mmm, my Betchy seems to not be lasting as long as three hours anymore. I can't complain though, seriously, like, my bet these Canon batteries will literally go for three to five to six hours a day. So, you guys do me well. You do. drink some more <sighs> drink more especially because it's getting hotter and hotter February is like the hottest month in Australia so we think we've had the heat but not quite yet there's more to come what are there <laughs> Tracy says pan pastels on my wish list. Yes. They are an amazing product. I use them a lot. But it'll be good to do a piece that uh, really puts a lot of focus onto them. Okay. Now, let's do her arm and her foot and then we can do her dress. So I'm not going to do the details of the hair quite yet. as far as it zooms out. That's what you're gonna see. <laughs> uh, and I'm also meaning to be doing like an OBS video so I can show you guys how exactly I set everything up over here. It's very easy. So you can make your live streams and stuff look super fancy real quick and it doesn't take a lot. It's just a matter of how you sort of layer them appropriately. And of course, it does help with the equipment you have. Um, anyways, we'll go through that another day. So I am going to use my brownish orange, which is on the color palette. Robert, no, Benjamin, Benjamin's alive, Benjamin's fine, because he got planted, but Tulip, Tulip I think has died about three times, I don't know how often I can resurrect Tulip, because I forget about it for like a week, I forget it until you guys remind me again <laughs> for the next time. <laughs> Um, okay, so we're working on our arm. I need to see her arm. No, you're not the only one to say that. You guys want to see my head bobble around. Wear something green. Actually, at the back of my green screen is a blue screen. And I do have a top that is the exact same blue. <laughs>
<laughs> Means there's a lavender walk behind the picture. Ah. <laughs> I should move that. I could literally make it look like it's behind the picture. <laughs> you could have a you could have a lot of fun with the green screen. <laughs> Um, there is an artist, he's got a couple of Udemy courses. Get his name. I'll find it out now. And he does good. I think he's got a pretty good tutorial on drawing trees. Matthew Fussell is his name. Matthew Fussell. So he's, he, that's what he's called. So he's called, it's called the virtual instructor.com. And he's got a lot of art lessons on there. And I'm pretty sure he's got quite a few of trees. So you, not, and not just using colored pencils, as pastel pencils, colored pencils, watercolor, paints. I think he does a bit of them, a bit of it in all the mediums. So check him out if you want a good tutorial on trees, because I have not yet got one. <laughs> Tim Gagnon draws and paints beautiful trees, Bob says. Rob says the painting and drawing channel. A lot of good ones on YouTube. Yep. But I've noticed a few of my followers actually do that. So you guys would want to know how to do something and you watch a million videos on how to do it, but you don't actually try them. <laughs> and then when you do try them, you try them without the video and then you don't get it right. So try and actually physically try it while you're watching a video um, even if the intention is not to finish it but the more you try and actually play with it the more you're gonna get the hang of it not by just watching you really have to do it <laughs> yeah the trees on here are cool but they like silhouette trees so there's not much detailing to them at all so um, I don't know how much that would help. Camera check. Thank you.
Gary says, I find the simpler the drawing, the harder I find it. Yep. It's, it's all in your head. If you guys keep telling yourself it's so hard, it's so hard, then it's gonna be. The minute you, you just tell yourself you can do it and you stop caring about the end result, then you will succeed a lot better than constantly telling yourself that you can't do something. Okay, now I'm going to add some of the apricot 041 on her arm. <laughs> yeah, I hear that so many times. Rob says I can draw paint and airbrush, but my hand writing is just no good <laughs> it's so funny and then you, you get some people the handwriting is amazing but they feel like they just cannot draw at all it's very strange my handwriting is very inconsistent it never stays the same so it's always changing it's like my handwriting goes along with my mood almost it's 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 just never consistent. <laughs> Sometimes I do everything in capital, write everything in capital letters. Sometimes I um, do a beautiful cursive. Sometimes I just do really messy. It's just it never stays the same. <laughs> Calligraphy, it is so beautiful looking at calligraphy though, isn't it? It's so nice to see just beautiful handwriting. It's so satisfying to watch someone do something in calligraphy and it just looks beautiful. Barb says, colored pencils are near go GTO <laughs> I searched long time and then found Sheldon. I oil paint for 45 years I want to sit and draw now I'm new but I love this oh, your drawings are amazing they're really really good <laughs> yeah it's good you you try something and you gotta try it to know if you like it or not Sometimes finding a teacher that you like does help a lot. I mean, I remember in primary school, I only had one year of doing math amazing because I, I suck at math. But I had one year that I actually got like distinction marks in math. And it was just because I had such an amazing teacher. And then after that, not, never did good in maths again. Failed almost every time. 
If you just find the right teacher for something, it can take you far. And that's it. The biggest lesson colored pencils are going to teach you is patience. But hopefully it also teaches you that you need that time for yourself sometimes. To just remove yourself from all the chaos of the world. And just create something. Or create not, whatever. Just a bunch of colors. doesn't even have to be something. But just the, the meditative feeling that you get and the relaxation that you get out of it is very rewarding for your soul. It's the way I see it. It's good for you to take time out for yourself. In whatever means. It also teaches you other things. Like how to conquer frustration. Because sometimes you just don't get something right. And then you have to... You have to... You have this like internal argument with yourself with whether you're going to finish something or not, if you're going to see it through. Those are all really good life lessons that art can teach you. It's not always bliss, but most of the time it is. <laughs> Robert says, I married my last teacher. <laughs> That's so cute. some of the granite rose 493 so Look at how plain that looks. We only created a light layer with three colors. And now we're going to blend that with solvent. So we can see where we're at. And then you'll just see how the color just becomes magic. Dipping that in my solvents. Um, let's go from light, the lightest colors first. first layer is gonna look blotchy but the minute you put the second layer down like her face looked blotchy like this as well before um, but the minute we put the second layer down it looks super smooth so the sanded paper is just <laughs> it's the best paper and you should just use it all the time that's how I feel about it just use it all the time don't even bother with watercolor paper <laughs> You don't have to put so many layers down. You, um, the pigment comes straight out. You get a really smooth result when you use your solvent. It's just, there's just too many pros to this paper. You can't fault it. Yeah, but camera is about to. 
restart it again. Thank you very much. So the first layer is going to look blotchy, don't worry about it, don't even try and get it smooth. Okay, let's blend our foot in. Okay, now watch for the second layer, we're gonna get this super smooth. So, let's go with, I'm gonna add some yellow. So I'm gonna add the pale yellow 011, which is on there. So paying attention to my reference. Okay, and then I'm going to use a little bit of the Apricot 041.
And then to bring those two colors together, I'm gonna use some of the granite rose. the brownish orange art yep 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 we're gonna be doing one a month so definitely want to get more of these out there You see how much smoother that's looking already? I want to carefully do the edge of the arm. Here is look, working on a Game of Thrones image of Arya. Oh, is that on your YouTube channel? Well, not yet. just subscribed I didn't realize I didn't subscribe before check out this channel <laughs> oh, 
Thank you, Gareth. Uh, camera check. Thanks, Robert. Thanks for joining us. Have a good night. <laughs> um, okay. So that looks quite nice. I think I want to add a bit of white to bring the highlight on the arm out even more. And the maybe highlight on the elbow. that in oh no the white that I'm using sorry is the Pablo it's white 001 I'm only using Pablo pencils for this entire drawing I haven't used any wax based pencils the Pablo ones are oil based Karen Dash Pablo oil based pencils That's the beauty about using sanded paper is you can use your lighter colors over the dark. They still show up really opaque. Uh, I wouldn't be able to do this on watercolor paper. Get that light to show up over the darker colors. That's okay for now, and then I'm just going to work on her foot a little bit more. So, also again with the pale yellow 011. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of the Granite Rose 493. And then and then I'm after this, I'm just going to block in the base color of the dress and then I'm going to have a lunch break because I'm getting so hungry. It is five past one. I had breakfast at about 8.30. I'm pretty hungry. Okay, let's... I want to actually make it a bit darker, so I'm going to add more of the brownish orange.
See you, Gareth. Thank you for joining us. He was asking where I get the reference pic. I made it. <laughs> I created this image in Clip Studio. Um, I don't know how many references I use. I probably used about 20 different components, different images to sort of create and build this one up. some white Okay, blend that in, and then we'll leave that for now. So let's do the underpainting for the dress and then that's going to be it for the real time live streamings for this entire drawing. The rest I'm just going to time lapse um, because pretty much all the deets, everything that needs to be taught has been taught throughout the um, live streams of this drawing so far. So there's a whole six parts of this. Um, available to subscribers on my, on my website um, so I think you guys have enough information so I don't have to live stream all the rest um, it should be good so I'll do the underpainting of the dress real quick and then um, you guys should have all the information you need to um, if you want to attempt it yourselves you can try and give it a go although I didn't give you the reference for the I didn't give you this reference I gave you the references that I used to compose this so um, you guys can put that together yourself because if you want to do this but otherwise yeah try and try and maybe use those references and create something that's a bit different a little bit more unique and then it's it's yours because this image um, I want to enter this drawing into a art competition so um, so yeah I don't mind people trying the cat or the girl or whatever, but I prefer if no one else does the whole thing. Unless you're just doing it for practice, you're not doing it to try and um, enter it into a competition or anything like that, then um, I'm cool with you giving it a go. No problemo. Um, okay, so her dress is like a grayish, bluish grayish brown sort of color. So, maybe for the dark shadows, we'll use grayish black number 008. Grayish black. Cool. Uh, to 
Kirche. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, it's starting to cook in this back room. The um sun after twelve, the sun like just bakes this room. It's thirty four degrees now. And yeah, the air conditioning I don't know. It's amazing in the middle of the house, in the front of the house, but it's not that great here in the back of the house. It's on, but it's not enough. I really love her face. I think her face is so cute, it turned out really good. I was a little bit afraid of doing her face. Which you can't see right now, but... Um, I took a photo. Let me take another one now that her hair is semi done. <laughs> so, if you have a closer view of that, mm, there you can see her pretty little eye. Damn, which way am I going? This way. She looks pretty cute. Her eye looks very... She looks very skeptical, very weary. Which is what I wanted. So, she feels... Like she's protected and safe by the cat. And you're not going to go anywhere near her because of that cat. Attention to your reference, Sheldine. Hello, pretty. What are you doing? Gosh, you are hot. You've been lying in the sun. Ridgebacks. They adore the sun. It's stinking hot. She's very hot. Hmm? In the heat of the day, she'll go lie down on the boiling hot concrete in the sun. And then, it must be nice because straight afterwards she'll come and lie down on the cold tiles, like under the coldest part of the air conditioning in the house. So it must be nice to, for them to get really hot and then really cold. I don't know. <laughs> it's weird.
gonna call it it I'm so hungry I really want to eat something now but um, I'll show you guys the whole picture from the side so let me turn this around bit of a better perspective sorry about the little HDR symbol at the top there but that is what it's looking like so I have the whole body still needs detailing on the cat so I still need to do all the details of the fur because we only did the underpainting of that and then um, I do got to add some extra depth and highlights to the horns and just a little more detail to the face and I still got to do the whiskers and stuff and um, then the little girl's dress and the details in her hair because that's also only like the underpainting part of her hair and then um, add more texture to the bottom over here and then add some nice bright stars in the sky and it should it looks a, it's it's a lot brighter in real life compared to what you guys are seeing on the screen I wish you guys could actually see what I'm seeing in front of me but um, I'm, I'm really enjoying this piece I think it looks really pretty. I'm very, very proud of it, I must say. <laughs> so it's my first fantasy art piece that I've designed and drawn. So I'm very, very happy with it. I look, I actually think, I, I want to frame it. Definitely want to frame it. I don't know if I'm going to sell it. I'll probably keep it. <laughs> But um, yeah, so we, we did quite a few tutorials, so we did a, a part where we just focused on the aurora sky and the stars, the silhouette trees, we did one where we pretty much finished off the background, then um, we, did, we also did the face, we did the horns, and I showed you guys how to work your background um, in properly so that your whatever's in the foreground looks like it is over the front of the background so it's not sort of merging with the background which some people make the mistake of doing i still have to fix that over there but like i said i've only done the underpainting of fur i still have to do the parts of the fur that are sort of going over those sections of the background and um yeah and then these trees have some highlights on them which i love i think those highlights look really cool and then uh there's a little bit of let me try and move this up more. And there you, go, you can see it. over here. There's a little bit more of a highlight there, the green between the trees, and then there's a light indication of the the snow on the trees here. So something here just doesn't seem right to me either. So I think I'm gonna blend those those bushes and twigs of the tree up further so that that gap's not there. And um, I don't know, I'm tempted to put something in the sky in this corner as well, but I need to have a look at it. But those are all things I'm going to fiddle with today. Like, I need to get this finished. I'm going to sit here. I'm going to persevere through it. So I'm going to have lunch now. Um, and then that's going to be the end of the live stream. And I'm just going to listen to an audio book and I'm just going to smash it. Smash it and get it done. And um, hopefully late tonight or early tomorrow morning, I'll be able to show you guys a finished image and um, have a play with the time-lapse video and it's gonna it's be gonna be really really fun <laughs> uh, Mojin's asking how many hours so far I think it, close to 30 almost I'm thinking because we this is part seven we've spent three three hours on this today 
And then the other ones we've been spending about three to five hours on them. So we've done seven parts. So we, we're in the 20, a few more than 20 hours. Which for this size drawing is actually really good. Because if we did this on watercolor paper, it would I think it would actually take us double that amount of time. We wouldn't be as far as where we are now if we did the same thing on the same size in watercolor paper. The layering would take far longer um, than this. So the, the beauty about this paper is that it does save you time, which means that you can draw things that are bigger. Thank you. Maureen says she loves watch, she loved watching the entire series. Yeah, and I'm excited to start the next one. So the next one is super, super cool. I created like a meditating monk using a whole bunch of Siamese fighting fish. It looks so cool. It's very colorful, very funky, lots of movement, lots of texture, and it looks insane. I'm really excited to get that started. So thank you to those um, who have been through this entire drawing with me. Um, and to those of you that pop on every once in a while on my channel, I appreciate it very much. Um, thank you for tuning in today. We at least got to see a little bit of this piece. And I'm really excited about putting the um, time lapse up when it's done. I'm mean, really excited about seeing the complete finished result. So, yeah. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you guys next time. Actually, when am I seeing you again? I think my next live stream will be next week. And we're doing... I am literally on the 1st of February. I'm going to be doing the... Color Pencil Magazine February Challenge. Where's my calendar? There it is. So I will be drawing that live from start to finish. So um, I, I don't enter the Color Pencil Magazine monthly challenge. I just show you guys how to draw it. But I encourage you guys to enter it. And hopefully those videos are able to show you a bit of technique. So then you can go ahead and draw yours and enter it to Color Pencil Magazine and see if you can win something. Um, so that is when I will be seeing you next, yes. So on the Thursday, the 1st of February, my 1st of February, which is your 31st of January for those in the US and the UK, um, we'll be drawing chocolates. Yes, I'll pretend they're vegan chocolates. <laughs> but um, yeah, so that will be live then, so I'll get to see you guys in a couple of days. Hey Wicked, yeah, just this last little bit that I am streaming to the public just to show everybody what we did. But cool. Okie dokie, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you guys later. Bye.